and you mentioned you moved to Trenton at one point. What age did you move to Trenton? Well, like I said, it was my, my basketball coach. My basketball coach, he sorted out the best basketball program for me and wanted me to get out of the city. Because like I said, he saw me turning, a different, turning up a different way. And he wanted me out of the city, so he found that in Trenton. And I had family in Trenton, so which made it easier for me to do. But when I got to Trenton, that turned me up. That turned me up. You know, now I'm on. Now I'm a bunch of, around a whole bunch of different kind of hustlers. Now, how far is Trenton away from Marcy? Um, two hours, about two hours. Oh, okay. So you moved far away. Yeah. Okay. Close, close to Philly, actually. Last stop before you get to Philadelphia. Okay, and how long were you there again? I'm sorry, I, th I think you mentioned that. I stayed in Trenton from 88 to pretty much 90. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And from uh, Trenton, we, I moved to Maryland. Did you guys still stay in contact and everything through that? When we was in Trenton? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we lived together. Yeah. You moved to Trenton with you? Yeah, I came back and got him. You know what I'm saying? When I when I set up everything in Trenton, man, I just came back and got him, bro. Like, I'm going to get my man and shit. Like, everybody in Trenton was pretty much waiting on him before he got there because I used to talk about him so much. So when he got there, shit was already laced up for him. You know, and then we end up, my aunt loved him to death. Like, you know, she was, like, he was her son too. As you know, man, we, we living in Trenton. Okay, and and uh, I mean, what was it like like out there versus out there over there in Marcy? Trent was different because it was because Trenton is like it's a little city like they don't respect you if you're not getting no money. You understand what I'm saying? Like that's what that's how Trenton was to me. Like this is how I I I seen it. Like, everybody getting money. If you not getting money, you are lame or you working. And I'll never forget one of the biggest dudes down there was teaching, just took me under his wing and was like, I'm going to show you some next level to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I was just basically on the street corner doing my ones and twos out there. But older dude, older G just took advantage, just just took me and was like, yo, took me under his wing, was like, I'm gonna show you some shit. He started bringing me up back to New York, but he was, I was going up and back in uh, Washington Heights, really seeing Colombians. It wasn't about no more bullshit buying capsules on the street. You know what I'm saying? This is not, this is like what you see in the movies, you know, it's a Colombians behind the door, ain't nothing in there but a fucking scale, coke and guns. And here I am, I'm, I'm six, 17 like this, like, oh shit, you know what I mean? This is, this is what it is. He taught me how to buy my shit uncut, raw, how to cook up. Like once OG taught me that from Trenton, man, it just, it just elevated to another level. And you guys are both going to high school at this time. Yeah, we both had left high school, man. Like Jay just got, Jay got to a point like it's not even worth going back to going back to New York, going to school. Cause mind you, when he was in high school, he went to school with Busta and Biggie and all of them. They was all in the same high school, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, you know, but we was in Trenton getting money, you know what I'm saying? So Jay just, after a while, he was just like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Our families trusted us, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they trusted us with the choices that we made, like, you know, yo, y'all, y'all, seventeen, take your care, big responsibility. So it ain't no nothing they can tell us about going to school anymore. We coming home, we putting food on the table, we taking care of mom. That's what we thinking. That's what the whole thing was for. That's this is what we've done this for to take care of our families. So we turning up in Trenton. Forget school. You mentioned him going to school with Biggie and Buster. Were you around during any of that? Yeah, I used to go up there and get him. <laughs> I used to go up there and hang out. You know what I'm saying? I was there. I used to sit be in the lunchroom with them and that shit. Been watching them battle sometimes and shit. You know, all that shit is classic. That's why a lot of people didn't know that. 
So Biggie, Busta, and Jay, they used to hang out in high school? They hang out, but they all was in the same school. They would be in the same lunchroom. They would be rapping and shit like that. But they wasn't hang out buddies, but they know who each other was. So fast forwarding it, they wasn't, you know, strangers to each other when they, when they met in the industry, you feel me? It feels like they would have been like, you know, like the main, uh, you know, guys in high school that were rapping, you know, like the most talented, they would have all stuck out. Yeah, I mean, it's just ironic how they all came, became successful from different routes, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, so you guys are in Trenton, you know, do you have any like wild stories from this time, you know, being out there or, you know what I'm saying, from Marcy or anything you could share with us? Man, my, I mean, I got plenty of stories. It's not, one is not bigger than the other. They all like wild stories. I don't like, I just had a, a great time when I was hustling in that, when I was hustling. I had a great time. I, I seen it all, I done it all. And I seen where I'm at now is not to glorify none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because this is why I'm here doing these interviews to talk about really the, the impact that all of that shit do. do. Like we can see and talk about the, the, the flyest chains and all the cars that I bought and the millions of dollars that I went through, but it's, people never seem to get the story of what that shit cost me. You know what I'm saying? The, the, our friend, my friendships with one of my best friends you know what I'm saying? It cost me that. It cost me losing family. It, people went to jail. People died. Like, none of that shit is seen when we glorifying all this. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I do what I do with these interviews. I don't want people to be like, you know, yo, that shit is hard, but I want you to learn from everything I'm telling you. Yo, these, the stories of having those cars is not really too many cars I didn't have. When Jay tell you we've been spending money since 88, you know what I'm saying? All this is true story. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is why I say Reason Moved Out, one of the best albums, was one of the best albums that changed the culture for the hustling game. You know what I'm saying? It's about my life. That's what's so unique. You know what I'm saying? But like, you know, it's a downside to that shit. And that's why, you know, I, I like to do this and, and talk about that too, both sides. You know what I'm saying? People be like, yo, well, when the last time I talked to him or seen him? You know what I'm saying? It, I ain't seen him since 98. You know what I'm saying? We've been going through these situations for a while, you know what I'm saying, on record. Um, I don't know how much detail you know. Like I said, I, I think you have a, a younger generation uh, uh, of followers. So this, this, this goes back 30 years with our history. You know what I'm saying? It goes back 25 years on, just on record. He hasn't stopped talking about, we haven't stopped talking to each other in over 25 years. You know what I'm saying? From Reasonable Doubt, Black Album, so many albums we've been, he been talking that people don't know that this has been a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And then this last, uh, this last thing on Drake album that he just done. Yeah, but that's just like the end, but it's so many, you know, me and you, it's so many different other records and albums, man, that over the years that people just been thinking, you know, from my side, they only hearing one side of the story. So people be like, yo, this guy's still telling this story. This guy's still talking. But they never know that he's been, I, I ain't been talking to myself. He been talking to me on record. So people don't know that. So I kind of break that down when I do my screenings and shit and let them know record for record that he's been talking to me. We could date it all the way back from 444. Prior to the Marcy May series page, I had a page called The Haven 444 from the album he made 444, where people thought that, you know, yo, he's never gonna respond, he don't talk to you, and bang, he, he, was, he gave me like four or five songs on 444 directed to me. You know what I'm saying? Damn. That created 40, 50, you know, Follow 50,000 followers, I ended up losing them. And then here I am with the Marcy May series. 
You know, um, I figure, you know, everybody can see that I'm not talking to myself with this.